at the molecular level. Good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, coffee. That's my home roasted Ethiopian. Excellent. Excellent for a snowy day. I almost didn't do the show because of it's about four inches of snow right now. And it's not stopping. And I have to be at the salon. But the show must go on. Nothing is going to stop the Daybreak Show today. <laughs> Looks like a snowstorm stopped it, what, about two weeks ago, but nothing's going to stop it today. A couple interesting things to share with you today. We do have some letters, actual letters, like paper and ink. <laughs> When I'm out on a quiet spree, fighting vainly the old ennui, and suddenly I turn and I see your fabulous face. Ethel Merman, 1934. It's one of my favorite old songs. Actually, my favorite version of that is by Frank Sinatra. The word ennui, it's spelled E-N-N-U-I. Look it up kind of a foggy depression, a foggy darkness that settles over people. Ennui. Once you start to drop some weight, you might think you didn't lose anything because your current fat is looser and jigglier. And that's almost always a good sign. What you say. My battery is running low and my phone is about to die. What you really mean? I don't want to talk to you anymore. In managing people, never scold anyone. I've always been a firm believer in this, is that you praise publicly and scold. <laughs> I shouldn't say scold, but reprimand or discipline privately. Never do it in front of other people. <clears throat> what I want you to do is, if you are in charge of people, you write down three things on paper. Three things. Put it on paper. This is, and maybe even make a, a copy for their file. What they did wrong. Two, what they did, or how they can do it right. And three, list all the things that they normally do well so they feel respected for what they do so when they walk out of a meeting with you, they don't feel like they've been reprimanded. Great way to handle employees. I've had many employees over the years. In 31 years of manufacturing, training, and employing people, we've only had about 30 people leave the company. When someone asks, how does one get a job with Paul Mitchell Systems, the answer is you can't. There's no positions open because nobody ever wants to leave the company. This is uh, some quotes from John Paul DeGioia probably one of my favorite mentors of all time, founder of Paul Mitchell Systems. We felt bad because we could only afford black ink on a generic white bottle. And it's funny because if you think about it, that's the Paul Mitchell trademark, the plain white bottle with black ink. What was initially something that was signaling their brokenness and how new they were and how cheap they could operate, or how cheaply they had to operate, it has now become their trademark. 
so you don't always have to change. Your humble beginning can somehow be turned into a trademark. Think about that. He also says, I had a friend who had a telephone and an answering machine because <laughs> he didn't have a telephone. She did the outgoing message in a British accent. When you called, it looked like a big company, but it was really just me and my partner, John Paul, and we didn't have a penny to our name. I love how he talks about how his company started. Michelangelo's great, perfect marble, David, cries out to its observer, you could be more than you are. Jordan Peterson. I don't know why nobody told you how to unfold your love. I don't know how someone controlled you. They bought and sold you. George Harrison, 1968, While My Guitar Gently Sleeps. Do you ever, uh, do you ever think young children wonder, why is mommy always taking pictures of herself and post posting them on Instagram? Maybe it wasn't hypergamy. Maybe you were just an asshole. Just a thought. You don't get the hypergamy pass every time you fuck up a relationship. Someone has to say it, it might as well be me. I have higher expectations for you than you have for you. Someone said, well, then it's still hypergamy. No, it's not. What if she just doesn't want to be with an asshole? And let's read a letter, an actual letter. This is written in a fountain pen, with a fountain pen, on paper. Imagine that. I won't read the whole thing. Dear George, it's not often that one finds himself in the singularly perplexing position of being on a first-name basis with someone who was quite blissfully unaware of your existence. Yet here we are. This is why I like the people of the pen. This is why people who write with fountain pens write better than people who don't. Change my damn mind on that. I've never received a letter from someone writing with a fountain pen that somehow wasn't profound, that somehow didn't make me think, that somehow didn't make me smile or smirk or satisfy, satisfy me. When I read a letter written with a fountain pen, it's like eating a ribeye steak. I'm satisfied. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is David, and I've been <clears throat> meaning to write you for some time to let you know, as so many others also have, that I found your content to be personally enriching. What I've enjoyed most is your intent pursuit of relaxation in your earlier work. Yes. So often we men fail to prioritize the little things that recharge us, <clears throat> and the world around us pays for it. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. We fail to prioritize the little things that recharge us. I know he's talking about pipes and cigars and things like that, things that I did in a lot of my earlier videos. And the world suffers when we don't recharge. Think about that. The world suffers when a man doesn't recharge himself. Mm. We owe it to the world to relax, to recharge our batteries. We owe it to life. We owe it to the world, to our families, to our children, to our loved ones and friends. Mm. Whew. Already this has blown me away. As it says in Hebrews, let us therefore strive to enter into that rest. Yes. Amen. 
<clears throat> your fervent ramblings are also littered with gold, like my favorite quote of yours, and the only one really has become a part of my mental cache of pithiness or pithisms. Pick a damn side. Pick a side. I've said that for a long time. What side are you on? Pick a side. It's wisdom that I wholeheartedly can recommend from my own life and have and have on several occasions repeated to younger men who have <clears throat> come to me for advice. Truly words to live by. Should you ever venture into the northwesterly portion of Montana and have the desire for a guide to show you some of the hidden gems of the area's Hereby, such as alpine lakes with excellent trout fishing, I would offer my limited services in exchange for joining my wife and me for a steak, or depending on the day's success, a trout dinner. I believe you would enjoy the area somewhat as I do. And though the grizzly population here is generally fond of Easterners on account of their superior tenderness, compared to the relatively tasteless and tough locals, I do not feel that will prove to be an issue for you. Since you have been on the carnivore diet, you are likely to be afforded some level of professional courtesy. Regardless, these mountains, in my experience, are a wonderful backdrop whereupon to display one's marvelous insignificance, and I should quite enjoy lighting a bowl of quality blend in such a state in your company. All the best to you, sir. I shall end my nocturnal I don't even know this word. Peregnations? It looks like P-E-R-I-G Pereg Peregrinations? P-E-R-I-G R I N A T I-O-N-S. Peregrinations here. Sincerely, David T. Tell me. Tell me. This is, this is. Get a fountain pen and you write better. I'll put a link for a fountain pen down below just because I want you to write better. Unbelievable. But now I have to look up that word. Give me one second. Peregrinations? <laughs> Peregrination. A journey, especially a long or meandering one. She kept Used in a sentence, she kept Aunt Lisa company on her peregrinations. Synonyms are travels, wanderings, journeys, voyages, expeditions, explorations, perambulations, odysseys, trips, treks, and excursions. So I shall read, now that you know what that word is, I shall read the last sentence. All the best to you, sir. I shall end my nocturnal peregrinations here. Sincerely, David T. Well, David T., it looks like you left your uh, return address on the envelope, and I might have to write you back, and we might have to start. This was postmarked in Missoula, Montana. I feel like I just ate a ribeye. Satisfying. And another one. Oh, this one's got money in it. <laughs> George. Thanks for everything, as always. The haircut and beard sculpting are perfect. Looking forward to having you on The Masculine Geek soon. Your friend, Vincent. Fantastic. Oh, and here's the tip that I forgot. <laughs> You didn't have to do that. You really didn't. But And it looks like it was written with a fountain pen, too. And then, of course, a 
postcard of a still life of Vincent Van Gogh called Still Life with Drawing Board and Onions, 1888. And there is a little pouch with a pipe. Van Gogh often had pipes in his still life. Thank you, Vincent. You didn't have to do that. I appreciate the letter, though. Get yourself a fountain pen and some good paper. Uh, speaking of fountain pens and good paper, I will be in Baltimore tomorrow. Uh, if you want to join for an in-person meetup in the lobby of the Baltimore, Washington, the BWI, it's called Baltimore, Washington International Airport Marriott in Linthicum, Maryland. I will be there tomorrow night to have a just an informal meet and greet in the lobby and hang out. We'll just get some coffee and hang out. But I will be at the, the Baltimore Pen Show in the afternoon, and I'm doing a uh, filming a documentary on the collectors, people that collect things. I find people that collect things fascinating. If you are within a couple hours of Baltimore, Linthicum, Maryland, uh, join me on Saturday night. Be a gentleman, be a lady, and let's get together and have a classy time of fellowship, great conversation, take a lot of pictures, maybe take some video, and enrich each other's lives. If you don't walk away from me a little bit better than you were, then I haven't done my job. If I don't walk away from you a little bit better, then you haven't done your job. So let's do our jobs and make each other better people because you are the average of the five people that you hang out with. And tomorrow night, you're going to be hanging out with some quality people. So your market value will go up after tomorrow night. And don't forget the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition is being held on May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. If you're a father and want to be a father someday, uh, or even think you might want to be a father someday, this is the convention to go to. It's three solid days. I will be speaking along with a all-star lineup of authors, thought leaders, and other speakers, content creators. An incredible lineup. I'm going to put a link for that down below. Also, I, I have been given the freedom to grant a partial scholarship to those who sign up for the convention, not a full scholarship. When people say they can't afford it, what they really say is, I don't want to afford it. I've been on this earth too long to, to be fooled by the I can't afford it phrase. We pretty much get what we want when we want. If you want to be a better father or are going to be a father, attend this convention. It's going to be absolutely amazing. It's in Orlando, Florida on May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. The link will be down below. And for some of you, maybe I'll see you tomorrow night in Baltimore. That would be fun. And then Monday morning on the Daybreak Show, finish your coffee. <laughs>